Okay, let's now get this little prototype implemented into our character. And we're basically going to do exactly the same um, rig we did for the pectorals, but we're going to do them on the back of a character. It's going to have a few extra elements that we need this system to work, but the principle is basically the same. And actually, let me uh, unhide again the um, this advanced deformations rig group locator. And what we have is basically um, a um, locator that is wired to certain properties coming from the clavicle movement. And he moves around based on on the values that are coming from the, the clavicle itself. So that's what we're going to do uh, for our characters back. We're going to um, paint some uh, weight maps and uh, push those vertices out and then control how much those vertices um, move uh, using our, our fall off. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my mesh and let's create a couple of new weight maps. So let's create one called weight map right scapula. And I like to keep my weight maps empty when I create them so I can paint manually what I want. I don't want to I don't want to set initial values because that will set them for the entire mesh, which is not what I want in this case. It might come in handy in other situations, but for now, I always create them empty. So we're going to start to work on the right side. Now, there's a couple of things to keep in mind as we uh, work through this setup. And the first one is, well, it's not really going to look very good, very accurate, because we don't have the topology to get a nice, accurate deformation from a scapula bone uh, right there. As you can see, uh, we don't have enough subdivisions and these don't follow uh, a shape kind of like this, like what you see painted on the character's uh, texture map. So we're going to work with what we have and uh, the, the idea is just for you to learn the technique and then if you ever have a mesh that is, has been proper, properly modeled with these deformations in mind, it should uh, work out very nicely. And also, the second thing is don't let the texture distract you from the movement that we're going to see because, uh, as you can see, the scapula was actually painted on the texture of the character, but there's no deformation whatsoever. So uh, just don't get distracted by that. Okay, now that we have this set up, let's create our little rig. So I'm going to create a locator and let's bring it into our advanced deformations rig. And let's move it over to more or less where we think our scapula bone should be. Let's say it's going to start more or less from there. And um, Let's move it to the back of the character. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay. And we're going to call him parent right scapula. We're going to duplicate it. And this one is going to be locator scapula mover. I forgot to add mover to this guy's name. And we're going to need a third one. And this one is going to be the scapula. I'm going to call it pusher. This is the one that is going to push the vertices outwards and the locators, the, the mover is just going to move around and control our our capsule. So let's keep let's give these guys some um, different shapes. So the parent is going to be a box. Like so. The mover is going to stay as a locator, but we need to make him smaller. Yeah, let's leave it at that. And the pusher, I'm going to make him into a little pyramid. gonna make 
make them a little bit bigger than the parent so it's easier to see and um, I would actually like him to be pointed the other way around but honestly at this point we don't really need to worry about that too much and now let's take these two locators and move them under the parent okay and since we're at it we can just mirror this right away and we have the rig for the other side of the character and we just need to uh, to rename it so this one is on the left side Okay, that's perfect. Uh, let's start rigging. I'm going to collapse this guy. I'm going to work exclusively on the right side for now. So the first thing we need is uh, let's paint some deformations onto our weight maps. Oh, I'm going to check that everything is zeroed. And let's zero this guy just to keep things clean. Uh, and let's paint some weights on the area that we want to deform on this character. So let's select our weight map. It's going to be the right scapula right here. And let's go to our weighting tab and let's paint some weights uh, like so. I'm going to check the actual values uh, that I'm painting later on I'm going to erase some weight from here the idea right now is just to to start to see some movement in these in the area of the back where the scapula is going to be moving so I guess this will do for now perfect so now we have our weight map we can start to rig our little uh, scapula deformation setup and for that purpose I think I'm gonna move these guys everything related to the clavicle reader onto a new workspace so um, let's create a new uh, workspace we're gonna call this one ace uh, advanced deformations okay and uh, let's take these guys. Uh, you can't really see because it's off screen. Let me see if I can get it. Ah, there you go. Uh, we take everything, we select them, and we say move nodes to workspace advanced deformations. So these nodes get moved over to that workspace. So let's go check it out. There they are. Uh, this tends to happen sometimes. Things get hidden or otherwise so let's uh, expand these guys looks like that did it for this rig and this does it for that rig okay great so now we can start working on the right side which is this one right here so what we are going to do is reuse the same uh, clavicle reader values that uh, we were using for the uh, pectoral setup. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is um, you will want to check out some reference videos or pictures on the web regarding how a scapula moves so that you can better see uh, scapular movement and action depending on the angles on the clavicle and the arms once you do that you will notice that uh, the uh, scapula movement it doesn't really depend only on the clavicle it's uh, it's actually dependent on the clavicle plus the upper arm movement it's kind of like a very complex bone so uh, it would take us both the clavicle and the upper arm to get it to work correctly in this case I'm just going to use the clavicle to keep things simple. But uh, 
uh, you might want to create, if you want to do this accurately, a second uh, reader, a second um, direction reader for the upper arm of the character. So you can actually see what the upper arm is doing. Uh, in this case, as I said, we'll just wire it, uh, everything to the, to the clavicle uh, for the exercise that we're going to do. So there's different types of uh, scapular movement. There's adduction, abduction, elevation, and depression. Uh, we already have some of those over here. So let's start with the elevation, which is this one right here. And for this one, what I would like to see is the scapula move in this direction and also rotate, okay, to push these vertices out. And I think they're actually going to need a little bit more weight on this side. That might be a little bit too much, but let's just get that area well defined. That's going to be enough. And we need, of course, our, our um, capsule. So let's create one. Capsule fall off. And uh, there it is. It's a little bit big, but let's get it into the um, advanced deformations rig. And actually, it's going to be parented to the mover. Okay, there it is. So let's reset all so it moves right there to its correct position. And let's resize it to something more reasonable. I guess that could do. And I'm going to rotate it like so. OK. So there it is. And um, this guy, I want to actually keep him inside of the, uh, of the character's mesh, because it's only going to come out when there is movement. OK. So I'm going to zero out these values. There we go. And now we can start rigging our little setup here. So let's bring in the character's mesh. And we're going to add onto it a general influence. And let's call this general influence, right? scapula and the locator is going to be the uh, the pusher okay so this is the guy that is going to push those vertices out so let's move it and as you can see we have all this part of the character that moves out which is what we'd want, okay? Uh, that seems, we'll determine later if this is a, a good enough distance or not, but right now we just wanna see those those guys out. So that's, that's perfect. Now the setup is working. Now we need to bring in our capsule and let's call this fall off right scapula. Okay, and let's wire it into our general influence. As you can see, the deformation goes away. If we move our capsule back, then we get it. So that's working nicely. Let's put it back in place. So, so far, so good. The system is working. Now, what we need to do is we want this capsule to affect certain vertices and push them in a certain way. 
depending on the movement of the clavicle. Okay, so we're going to be using the values coming out of this reader that we already have for that purpose, and we're going to drive certain parts of the mover uh, locator. Well, not certain parts, but certain channels on the mover locator depending on these values. So let's uh, get all that set up. So let's get our mover locator. Let's bring him in. And we're going to add a few extra channels to it. So we have already position and uh, let's add rotation, it's rotation channels. And we're going to add another position and rotation channel again. Uh, and this rotation channel, we need to make it the first channel down here. Uh, you'll see later why, but, and let's rename it. And this one is going to be uh, driven clavicle up. And this position is going to be the same. Driven by the clavicle up. And let's add them to the schematic. Cool. Now we can start working with these guys. Actually, I'm going to keep this rig down here. We're going to create a, a rig up here. Okay. So what we need to do is based on the angles or the values coming from our direction reader, we need to move our capsule uh, in different ways. So the first thing is we need to move it. <clears throat> excuse me, in uh, in Z so that uh, we, we can actually see some some movement on the vertices coming out. So it needs to move outwards. How much? We're about to find out. Uh, there is one thing related to our clavicle reader, and it's that the values coming out of it are actually very small. As you can see, uh, it's uh, 0 0.0134. And that's basically because of the size of of um, of the rig that we're using. It's a very small uh, rig, and if you remember the size value, it's affecting a lot of the calculations that we're doing in here. So that's why we're getting those small values. Uh, we're gonna try to more or less uh, nor normalize them as much as possible, or at least get some values that are gonna be easier to read. So in this case, we're going to start with the north value, which is the one we're going to be reading. And let's immediately just multiply that by something else. Hold on, because something else was selected. Oops. There you go. We need only the x value. We're going to multiply this by 10. Uh, actually more than that let's say we should be approaching here uh, 1 so let's say no 80 was too much we're going beyond 1 I don't want to exceed 1 let's say that I'm trying to sort of normalize this um, even if it does not become very close uh, 0.66 I guess I guess that will do so now we have more uh, visible values to work with and the next thing is okay what are we gonna do with this well as I said first we need to move our capsule out so the mover needs to move on the uh, on the z-axis how much well how about we just wire this directly and see what that does well that moved quite far and um, it didn't move out in the correct direction. So first we need to multiply this by minus 1. So let's add another multiply node. And let's do minus 1. And now it moved way too far. So I guess we're going to multiply by something a lot less than 50. We could try multiplying by 5. Just as a base of uh, how much this would actually move. Let's leave it at that for now. Let's say that uh, it's 5 d 
the amount of units we're going to to move the capsule back at, at least we can go back and change this and it will update the rest of the rig okay so now our capsule is moving backwards as you can see it comes out and the and it displaces those vertices the problem is that the, when the arm goes down uh, the capsule goes inwards instead of coming out again and the reason for that is of course the values coming out of the uh, of the north x channel are positive when the uh, when the clavicle is rotating upwards but they're negative when it rotates downwards so we need to um, to ensure that for this channel the values are always um, positive well let's see what what what's what what we got, what we have well actually they have to be negative uh, so we have to get rid of the minus sign right here so let's see what we got to uh, get rid of that and we have an absolute node that will help us do that so now we have positive values and positive values downwards too we get rid of the sign and as you can see our capsule is always going up and then going down okay we also have a second problem and it's that since the capsule is moving a given amount that is dependent on how close we are to these values to the actual markers on the rig uh, the clavicle cannot rotate downwards uh, doing a depression as much as it can rotate upwards so the uh, scapula is going to come out a lot less when doing a depression than when doing an elevation so we might want to deal with that in a different way we might want to have a given multiplier for when the uh, the movement is going up and a different one for when it's going down so let's try that what we're going to do is here in between we're gonna insert a conditional node so we're gonna say okay if the rotation is greater or the values are less than zero well actually we would have to yeah let's wire it this way let's add it first uh, okay so we're gonna take this value and this is the value I'm going to examine this is gonna be my test okay and I'm gonna say okay if my value here right now the one coming out of this this one is positive which means the uh, the clavicle is going up and now it's going to be negative okay so if this value is greater than zero that's going to be what I'm gonna test this value is greater than zero so we're gonna say uh, clavicle direction greater than zero okay then I know I'm going in the upwards direction so I'm going to use this value coming out of this node right here okay and we're going to add it as I wouldn't say I'm gonna output the true value and a false value from my test so let's add those channels to the schematic and the true value is going to be the value I currently have and if it's not if it's going downwards I want it to come out a little bit more than that so I'm gonna add another multiply node and we're gonna multiply this by let's try minus 2 which will give us again um, the same direction of movement but a little bit more of it and let's wire the output of this into the Z position channel so you can see now we have our clavicle travel uh, sorry our scapula traveling twice as much when it's going back uh-huh looks like here is going too far too let's see what's going on with our test okay looks like it's going outwards when it shouldn't
let's see what the test is doing. So we'll select the node. We're saying, okay, it's 0.661. Oh, it, I'm testing to equal, of course. Greater than, that's what I need to test. Greater than zero, good. Lesser than zero, okay. Now we can set this back to minus two. There we go. Perfect. Now it's moving correctly. Okay. So that takes care of pushing the scapula. Uh, well, in this case, our deformer simulating the scapula out depending on the uh, on the movement of the clavicle. And another thing is you can see we can adjust how it moves. We're going to do that later on using a separate node. But first let's get all the movement and rotations correct so we can we can move on with the other parts of the rig. So, what we need to do now is rotate the uh, the scapula into a better shape. So, for example, here I want it not only uh, coming out, I want to rotate it more like this. So, and it needs to come up too, of course. So let's do that. Let's say it needs to now move on the um, y-axis. So how much is it going to move? Let's see. Uh, we can take this value. Let's wire it right there and see what that does. That was a little bit too much. But I want to see if it goes down when the scapula comes down. Yeah, that's perfect. It also comes down. So let's do the same. This is a little bit too high. So we can divide this. Oops, that's not the node I intended to create. <laughs> that's a math multiple. Math divide. There we are. And we're going to divide this by 2. So it moves up a little bit less. But of course, that's also going to affect that it moves less when it's going down. And I don't want that to happen. So again, we need another conditional node. So let's do, uh, again, same routine. So I'm going to test for the same value as this one. And I'm going to say, OK, if this is greater than 0, then I'm going to use this value, which is divided by 2. And if it's not, I'm going to use just the original value, which is not divided by 2. So now it moves down further and up just the amount I want. Okay. So far, so good. Okay. Well, let's actually see if this is making any difference at all. Uh, we, this is with the, with the formations, without the formations. So, yeah, it's doing something. Right now, it's not doing anything really uh, amazing. Let's give our scapula a little bit uh, a better shape. So we're going to do that by rotating our uh, our scapula in the correct direction. Let me just first rename this this node. Done. Okay. And let's start making some space here because things are going to get pretty uh, busy pretty fast. So now we need to, let's move this guy away. We don't need him for now. That's just the uh, deformation setup. Now we need to rotate this node on the z-axis. How much? Well, let's see. If I take the output of this node and I just rotate it on x, uh, almost nothing happened. Let's see what's going on. 
It's rotating. <laughs> yeah, a negligible amount, okay? Um, there are several reasons for that. One is, again, these values that we're reading, uh, it's a small value and it's been converted to degrees directly. So I could, again, just add a little multiply note here in which this, this could work in this case, but um, I found that converting directly uh, float values to, to degrees tends to behave uh, rather strange in the range of the first few degrees. It's been like the first 10 degrees, it behaves kind of weird. It's not wrong, but um, the control, this is automated, but when you do it manually, it, sometimes the controls behave a little bit weird. So the correct way to do this would be to do a conversion between this, which could be a distance, onto degrees. This is very useful when you're dealing with distances to degrees. Um, so what you do is you need to perform a radians to degrees conversions. We're going to assume that the units coming in are radians and we actually want degrees of rotation. And as I said, this is mostly designed for distances, but it can help in situations like this where the ranges are very small. So to do that, it's uh, very simple, but the math is not very complicated. You can actually just Google it and see how to convert radians to degrees. In my case, I have um, an assembly. I have a, a bunch of assemblies that I've collected over time as I've worked in Modo that are basically translations of stuff I've used in other applications so I could uh, continue more my rigging here. And uh, I have a bunch of stuff that basically takes care of some of these conversions. Uh, so these assemblies, uh, you can get them by going to my website. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you should see the address there in the video somewhere. And uh, once you have them installed, you can just use them for uh, many to solve many different rigging problems. So in this case, I have an assembly that I've already created called uh, Radiant to Degrees. So I'm just going to drag and drop that into the schematic. And I get this. And actually what it does is uh, it's very simple. If you go inside and check, it's just a very simple math that I'm doing there. So nothing really to be crazy about. So all I'm going to do is plug this in and plug that into the uh, what a rotation Z channel. I can see a little bit more of the effect right there. Uh, but it's still not enough. And it's not rotating in the right direction. This has to rotate on the opposite direction. Okay. So let's add, again, a little multiply node here. And we're going to multiply by minus 2. Uh, more. Minus 4. Minus 5. That should do it. Okay. And finally, let's see what happens when it rotates downward. Downward, it's rotating inwards a bit, which is okay. Because it's just a little bit. And that would probably be what happens when you rotate both the clavicle and the arm. It needs to go down and rotate inwards a bit. And that's it. Okay. So now, let's see what our character looks like. I think I'm going to have to paint some additional weights up here. So I get part of these vertices to move a bit too. I'm going to do that in a second. Actually, we can do it as we go because uh, this is this is what you do when you're fine-tuning these deformations. There you go. That's pretty much it. Okay, so now that our scapula is moving correctly, let's check other movements, let's say. So it's moving upwards and out. And I was going to make it move a little bit to the right. Actually, let's, let's try that. I'm going to try it directly with this value. And it's too much. And it's in the opposite direction. So let's add another multiply node here. And 
I'm going to multiply this by minus 0.5. Actually, less than that, 0.25. There you go. That moves it in that direction. And then also a little bit inwards when it comes down. So we have the up and down movement done, which is great. That part is done. Um, what would be next? Well, now we need to do the uh, the uh, the um, sorry adduction and abduction movements. So let's make some space here to work in those. And we can continue uh, in this area. All right. Actually, I've just thought of another way of approaching this that will allow us to take advantage of what we've done so far. So the, um, the clavicle, sorry, the scapula, let's see what it needs to do when the uh, clavicle goes forward and backward. So when it goes forward, I want it to again come out. The capsule has to come out and it has to move to the right, okay? and take a little bit of a rotation. And then when it moves back, it needs to come out again and move the other way, okay? So now we're going to base this from the east X channel, okay? So what we're going to do is, let's see what's moving it in the um, Z direction, which is uh, this node over here. And this node is saying how much to move in case the clavicle goes this way or that way. And in this case, I think I'm going to make it come out the same amount for um, for the movement on the uh, forward and backward. So the first thing is, again, I need to get rid of the sign of the uh, value I'm going to get because otherwise it's going to go... Uh, sometimes in, sometimes out. So let's do another absolute node just to get rid of that negative or positive sign. Okay. And I'm going to move it on the Z position. But since I need to wire this to the uh, Z position, and I don't want to lose this connection, I have two options. One would be to create another position transform that I could drive uh, for the purpose of the new direction of the of the scapula or since this is already done I'm just gonna add a math add multiple node and this node allows me to add multiple values coming in from different parts of the graph uh, and sending them to a single channel so I already have this part of the graph feeding it so now I'm just gonna feed it with this new value so we have both values going in and they're both gonna feed the Z channel of the uh, locator. So right now, when it moves forward, as you can see, it's not doing much. So we need to, let's see what values we're getting. Yeah, it's a super small value. So let's multiply that. And let's say by 10, uh, it's going to be in the opposite direction by minus 2, more than that, minus 4. Ah, I made it positive, minus 4. There you go. So our capsule is out again, and it should be out also when it goes backwards. That's cool. All right. So we got that part working, and now it needs to move to the right, okay? So we're going to do the same setup with it here, and then feed it onto a math multiple node. So let's get that one set up too. So how much is it going to move? Well, let's see what we were doing for the other one. We were taking this value and just multiplying it by by this, and actually I should have done this. I should have also uh, multiplied 
this by 5 just to get a better range of values. Let's do that. Multiply by 5. So now this is really going to go out. So now we need to minus 1. Oh, damn. Typo. We need to bring it back. There you go. Cool. So, again, for the x value, I was just taking this and feeding it directly uh, multiplied by minus 0.25. So let's give that a shot. Let's take this uh, value coming out of here. Well, actually, not this one because this one got the sign removed. This one right here and multiply that. And let's start with 1 and we'll see what that does. We're going to wire this into this other input. Okay, it's moving in the wrong direction. So it's going to be minus one. There you go. And actually that's maybe a little bit too far. The scapula shouldn't go that far. 0.75. Maybe something like that. And we're still going to rotate it, so we, we don't have to worry too much about uh, being super accurate yet with the position. So let's get the rotation going. And again, our item, the locator, needs to rotate on the z-axis. So we're going to get another uh, math multiple add node over there. perfect and let's see so it needs to rotate on the z-axis how much uh, we need to again convert this to from radians to degrees so let's bring in another assembly let's plug this guy right there actually I could have instanced it because it's just math nodes but if you want to instance uh, an assembly, I don't recommend this with assemblies that actually use items in the scene, but with math assemblies, it seems to be a... Okay, so you can select it, right-click, and say Instance, and that way you don't have to uh, have the uh, a second assembly creating more nodes in the scene. So we'll just get rid of that, and I'm going to use this value. Perfect. And I was going to multiply this by something, right? Let's see what we were doing for the Z rotation. Yeah, multiplying by a certain value. In this case, this guy was using minus 5. So let's try something similar. I'm going to multiply it right now just by 1. And let's see what that does. Plug it as a second input. OK. It needs to be more than that and needs to be in the opposite direction. So let's do minus 5 like the other one did. That looks better. Okay, that's good. There is something that I'm going to do to my capsule though uh, to better grab the vertices on the mesh. And it's I'm going to go and increase its uh, solid core so I can see more movement on the vertices that actually need to move something like that as you can see there's some movement right there so everything is looking pretty good and now, what I need to do is uh, figure out, let's see, for the for this part of the movement, it's coming out. Yeah, it's sort of pushing nicely. But there's something else I want to do here. I can actually also use the push object to give the, uh, the vertices I'm displacing a sort of like a new direction. 
as you can see. So I could rotate that item too, if needed be. And that's what I'm going to do for this particular pose. I want to rotate them a little bit to face the other way. I also see some interesting deformations there. It looks like uh, our values are kind of weird, but we're going to look at that in a moment. So that way, that way we're good. I just want to make sure I finish this. Then for this way, for this pose, I might want to make it move. I think the direction is fine. The rotation might be a little bit too much. So let's again add a, uh, a conditional node that we're going to use to feed different values to this. Uh, where was it? Conditional. If Let's see what values we're getting right now from assembly. So we're dealing with the east value. It, that's, it has to be negative. Okay. So if this value is greater than 0, then it means that we need to deal with the value we're currently using, which is a true value. But if it's not, then I'm going to take this guy and multiply it by a little bit less than this. So we're dealing with minus 5. Let's say something like minus 3, maybe. And that's going to be my false value. And we're going to disconnect this from the node. There you go. Minus 2. Yeah, something like that. That looks OK. Let's move these guys up. Okay, so we get a little bit res less, less rotation, which is okay. And as you can see, we do have movement on our friend's back as the clavicle moves. Now, right now, it looks very actually kind of weird at some points. And as I said, we don't have the topology to really get this to work nicely. But uh, the purpose of the exercise is to see how we could set up this so it would work in a scenario where we actually have the geometry to work with it. And now I can decide if I'm pushing the vertices way too far, which I do think we are. So I'm just going to take my push locator and move it in a little bit so we don't push them out that much. We want to see movement. We don't want to see a hump. So I guess that should pretty much do it. That's quite nice. Uh, there's one more thing you can do to modify how these values are uh, happening. So let's say, for example, that uh, you think that the scapula is going up way too fast when we have this up movement, and you would like to slow it down a little bit and then get to its final position. Well, there's an easy way to do that. We have a very useful node that you will actually find lots of uses for, and it allows you to change the interpolation of procedural movements such as this one. Uh, because right now, since everything is just being derived from math values, our interpolation is pretty much linear. But this allows you to change the interpolation of, uh, of all of this math. So let's try, for example, when he's going up, 
I want to change the speed at which he goes up. I want it to be again a little bit slower at the beginning. So I could take let's let's see what is the rig to move up the uh, our friend and it's here. It's this one right here. Okay, the clavicle uh, direction. So what I'm gonna do, uh, well, this conditional node is we have this node called uh, the relationship node, and I need to find it because I always forget where it where it is. Channel relationship. There it is. Okay. And this node will allow you to use a custom function curve to determine the interpolation between your values. Okay, so um, let's take uh, our input is going to be this guy. This guy needs to be wired before he allows you to do anything. And the output is going to be the Y position. So right now, everything goes back. It's not doing anything. He goes back to zero. Okay. So we need to set some keyframes on this guy. So just deselect it and select it again. And you'll see this pop over appear on your screen. And now you have access to uh, the graph. So you can click on that and bring up this graph. So what you need to do is um, we need to determine which values we are getting so we can create keyframes on this. So we already have one keyframe, which is a keyframe at zero, but we need a second keyframe for when the arm is fully posed, which right now should be, um, let's see what value it is, 0 0.06x8. That, uh, that is the, uh, the other keyframe. So we can start to move this to decide how far the clavicle is going to go based on the input values okay and right now we got rid of the downwards movement apparently so we will need to s divide this with an if statement again but I'm just showing you this so you can see how it works. And this is where you change the interpolation. You can say, okay, I want the movement to really start slower. And then it accelerates as the arm goes up. So you can you can keep playing with this to generate the motion you want. But since I got rid of the uh, of the downwards movement, I am not going to use it just to not complicate things. I just wanted to show you how it is used and why it can be useful. So that's really nice. But I'm just going to go back to my original curve. Not worry about this. But now you know how to set it up. Uh, so we're basically done with our movement right there. And of course, it's going to look nicer. Uh, one thing I can do is let's do this. Let's take our weight map. And we're going to soften it a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Weight map selected. And let's say smooth selected. That smooths out the values for that weight map. And let's see how it looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty neat. We still have a couple of things to do to finish this setup. The first one is, of course, we need to parent all this to the main rig. So we're going to do the same thing we did for the uh, pack. We're going to take our parent item. And as you can see, he's dynamically parented to the uh, joint C spine zero 05. So we're going to do the same for our scapula setup. Let's unhide our torso rig. There's our spine zero 05 joint. So let's take the parent of the entire scapula rig. There you go. It's going to setup mode. 
shift select spine 0, 5 and add a dynamic parent. Oops, uh, I forgot. Compensation must be on. There we go. So now our little setup will follow the torso wherever he goes. And still works. There's our capsule moving around. So what does the mesh look like with or without the deformations? This is with, without. So this does add some life to your rigs uh, when appropriate. The, I'm not saying this is something you should use all the time, but it's something that it comes in really handy when you want to have these kind of effects where you have stuff sliding under the skin of the character. So that's it. Uh, we're done with the setup for the scapula for our character. Obviously, I will take care of doing the other side. You don't have to stay and watch. You can just do it by yourself. And uh, let's move on to the next topic in our series. All right.